everyone. My name is Chloe, and today I'm here with my May book haul. So May is Mother's Day, my birthday, and it just seems like a lot of like holidays and things happen in May, but ironically, none of these books are from either of those holidays where I maybe would have received books. <clears throat> the reason for that is my family really doesn't buy me books because I, they know that I have so many and I've read so many and stuff. I think it's kind of overwhelming to them. And I'm also like very much, I love shopping for books, especially like in thrift stores or library book sales or whatever. So like buying me books is great, but it also like kind of takes some of the thrill away for me. So nobody bought me books this month, but I bought a lot. So let's just get into it. Um, the first couple, the first three, are ones that I actually got at the end of last month. They were a part of a thrift books order that didn't come until the very end of April, early May, so I didn't get to talk about them. So um, the first one is The Cradle Will Fall by Mary Higgins Clark. So I talked about it last month. I am kind of on a Mary Higgins Clark, like, buying binge at least I haven't read any yet but I remember her as being like one of the OG kind of thriller authors that kind of got me into reading thrillers and um Tara from Buzzwords Books talks about her a, a fair amount I mean not often but like more than anybody else on booktube and so she really motivated me to buy some so this one has blue sprayed edges and it is a medical thriller about this woman. She, I think she's like a journalist or a reporter or something. She gets in like a minor fender bender and has to stay overnight in the hospital. And she thinks she sees um, somebody like in a body bag be put in the trunk of a car while she's at the hospital. And so then she, she must be an investigator or something because then she goes back and she's investigating a suicide that kind of looks like a murder and it's tied back to this doctor. And, um, and then I think she's about to like have surgery for, from this doctor and it's a doctor that's like in infertility and he's doing some stuff that's super sketchy I don't really know medical thriller that's really all I needed to know and I really am excited to do this one I think Tara and I might be uh, buddy reading this in June Tara remind me if this is the one you picked but um yeah I'm excited then we have another Mary Higgins Clark called remember me so this one I think is about a couple who um they go to, let's see, does it say where it is? Cape Cod, because their marriage is kind of struggling, and they have a young a daughter that kind of like having this baby kind of brought them closer or whatever, but um, she something happened, and they lost their two-year-old son, and she has a lot of guilt about that. So they go to this house on Cape Cod, and things keep happening that force her to kind of like revisit um, the death of her son, and I think there's just some scary, sinister things going on. I don't really know. Um, he is like a lawyer and he takes on a, um, guy, uh, accused of murder. So I don't know. I don't like to know a whole lot. I just know like she is one of the OGs and I ha have enjoyed her books a lot in the past. Then we have, um, Jody. Jody is one of my loves and this is Handle with Care. This is one I have not read. I love Jody Pico books because she really just makes you think about things. And so this is about, um, this girl she's born with. I don't think it says on the back what she's born with, but a disease where her bones are like very brittle and she is going to break a lot of bones probably as she is growing up and um, throughout life. And she just has a lot of disabilities that make her life a little more challenging than otherwise. And this is um, a lot about the parents, like it says everything changes, um, after a series of events forced Charlotte and her husband to confront the most serious what-ifs of all. What if Charlotte would have known earlier of Willow's illness? What if things could have been different? What if their beloved Willow had never been born? To do Willow justice, Charlotte, Charlotte must ask herself these questions and, and one more. What constitutes a valuable life? And I just love the way she makes you think. I love the way she brings up topics that maybe aren't talked about as much. And they're always kind of chunky, so I am a little overwhelmed and intimidated by her books. But I never regret picking them up. So, got this one. Then, um, we were, me and the girls went to Ainsley's swimming lesson the other day. And as we're driving, I see these big yellow signs that say, like, used book sale, turn here, all money goes towards scholarships. So, it's the end of the school year right now. And I was like, well, I'll go help a kid out. I'm assuming it's a high school kid selling all their books going to college or something. No, we get there and it's these two older ladies in their garage just full of books. And most of them, it that was on 
Friday and the sale hook on Thursday, Friday, and it was going to go a little bit on Saturday. So it had been pretty picked through. So I only got one, but it was Worthy by Katherine Ryan Hyde. So she is the author that wrote Pay It Forward. She writes kind of inspirational women's fiction, maybe is what I would call it. Um, I don't think she's necessarily Christian fiction, but um, so she has this crush on this guy, I think. Um, it says, Virginia finally had the chance to explore a relationship with Aaron when he asked her on a date. Aaron has a young son named Buddy. And so she was really excited about this. But then something tragic happens that kind of ends that relationship before it even starts. Now it's 19 years later and Virginia's dog runs away. And the person who um, catches her dog for her is kind of a timid young man. And I'm guessing it's going to be Buddy. But I don't know. Um. It says two strangers come together and uncover a shared tragedy that kept them apart. So I'm guessing it's going to be Buddy. I'm guessing it's going to be emotional. I'm guessing it's going to be sweet. And um, I just can't wait. This is one of those like really buttery soft covers too. And I'm really excited about it. Next is one that I was so graciously sent by the publisher. So this is um, the, the Garden of Broken Things. And this one is about a single mom, I believe, um, who, yeah, she's a single mom that goes and takes her son from New York to Haiti, um, where they are from, just to kind of escape the city and kind of get uh, a little break from all the pressures of raising a black child in America. And so, so, so they go, and um, then a massive earthquake happens. And it says this was written before the horrific earthquake that struck Haiti in 2021. Um, this book delivers the reader beyond the headlines and into the shattered world of one family brought to the brink. Um, she tells a haunting and astonishing story of restoration and disaster, motherhood, and the bonds that carry through generations. So I think this sounds really good, um, and I'm really excited to kind of see how this plays out. I've never read this author before, Francesca. Uh, I'm not even going to try to say that last name, but um, I've never read her, but it says... Somewhere it says, um, compared to Toni Morrison at the height of her power. So Toni Morrison is a big name. So hopefully um, this is really good. We'll see. So then, you guys, that was going to be my whole, whole haul for the month. And uh, yesterday was our, well, this weekend was our library book sale. So I went to the library book sale. It was all day Friday and then Saturday like 10 to 4 and then fill a bag on Sunday. So I was like, okay, Friday was a little crazy. We weren't able to go. I like didn't really try to go that hard. And so I was like, I'm going to go Saturday. That'll be a good like I'm not waiting till Sunday when everything's super picked over. But I'm not like the first one at the gate trying to buy a bunch of stuff that I don't need. So we went Saturday and I went and it was kind of like a letdown. There was only, I think one or two books that I wanted and then I went back through and found one more so I had a total of three but I had spent all my cash on Friday and because they were a dollar each for hardbacks 50 cents for paperback I think um yeah I think that's right and so um I had spent all my cash on Friday and so they're like okay no big deal just take this slip to like the regular bookstore within the library and you can pay there and they'll stamp it and then you can come back because I had to use credit cards so I go into the little, like, Friends of the Library bookstore that's always there, and I bought, like, 12 other books. Not all of them were for me. Some were for the kids, but I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten here to show you about. So I got 10 books for me, uh, two or three for the kids, and a puzzle, and spent $20 total. So I feel pretty good about it, but gosh darn it, I thought I was going to get out of the book sale. Like, I was really disappointed, though, that I was only going to get three books from the library book sale, so... I'm like happy and sad about this. It's bittersweet. Let's just talk about the books. So I got another Catherine Ryan Hyde. I got When I Found You. So this is about um, a man, I think, who does not want a family. He doesn't want to have kids, doesn't want any of that. But then he finds a newborn infant in the woods or something. Yeah, he finds it in the woods and he's like bonded to this kid. Well, then the grandma of this kid shows up and she's like, hey, that's my grandson, whatever. And she takes him back. And she, he says, just please, like, keep in touch. And so then they do, and it's 15 years later. The kid comes back with the grandma, and this kid has a criminal record. He is just kind of a mess. And I think it's them kind of rediscovering some sort of relationship. Like I said, I'm assuming this is going to be inspirational, sweet, probably emotional, and I'm excited to read it. 
Um, next is one that I did get for the kids, but it's Little House on the Prairie. So um, we have something near us that is like farmstead kind of life and you can go and we went with friends last week and um they are my our friends are six four and two I just have the four and two um and they she said her six-year-old is loving the little house books and so then my daughter's like what what and because we go to this farmstead area quite a bit um she was interested in knowing like what the hype was about. So this was at the library book sale. So I decided to get her the first. I have read these, but not since I was probably fourth or fifth grade. Um, I remember we read it and then like transformed our whole classroom into like the little house house. And it was so cool. But um, yeah, so I got this. I don't know when we'll read it. Probably not in the next year or two. Maybe in the next year or two. I don't know. But we will see. Um, then we have... Where When All the Girls Have Gone by Jane Ann Krentz. So this one is about a girl who um, calls her sister because her sister's best friend, I guess, has been killed and her sister is missing. And so she's trying to find her sister. She works with this PI. I don't really want to know a whole lot more about it, um, except that it just kind of looked interesting for some reason. For some reason, this caught my eye. And yeah, there's multiple women missing. Where'd they go? Are they connected? I don't really know. Then we've got another Mary Higgins Clark, Where Are You Now? This one's very similar um, premise in that it's been 10 years um, since this guy has like been a part of his family, but he's just kind of disappeared. However, every year he makes a phone call to his mom on Mother's Day and he doesn't answer any questions. He just says, Happy Mother's Day. I'm fine. I love you. Bye. Um, his dad, I guess, died in 9-11. He still didn't come back or make contact for that, but he calls every year on Mother's Day. So his sister decides to try to track him down. So there's that. Um, then we have The Dead Ex by Jane Corey. So she wrote My Husband's Wife, and I think I liked that. I can't remember. But she, um, this book is about a man that dies and four women that are connected to him somehow. And the four of them come together to try to figure this out, I think. And um, it says... Let's see. The answer lies in the connection among these four women and the person they can't escape. Sounds good. Then we've got The Atonement Child by Francine Rivers. So I have never read anything by Francine Rivers. She is a Christian fiction author. Um, this one, I don't know why I picked it up. It just kind of sounded interesting. And um, this is about a child who was born. Um, she, she or he is the product of a rape. And I imagine this will be... Um, Heavy hitting, for sure. Probably a lot of faith. Um, hopefully inspirational. And yeah, I'm excited to give her a go. Next is another. I didn't realize. I should have grouped these. Another Mary Higgins Clark, A Cry in the Night. So this is about a single mom. She works, I think, at a art gallery or something to just make ends meet. And there's this uber famous artist. And they kind of strike up a relationship. And he takes her to his cabin in Minnesota or somewhere. I don't know if it says, but... Um, she's a city girl and she goes to this cabin and things are not as they seem. Sounds snowy and creepy, this house. And I don't know, sounds creepy, but I'm excited. Then we have, um, this is how it always is by Lori Frankel. So all of these hardback, perfect condition books were $2, $2. Um, so this is about a family who their five-year-old, um, says he's tra transgender. He, I think, is a boy, um, but feels like a girl. And just kind of how they navigate that. And I think his parents are pretty supportive. Um, this is a, a few years old. I can't remember what year it was published, but it's a few years old. And I'd heard really great things, but I've never picked it up. So for $2, I'm going to try it. And then, this shocked me, um, Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. So this is one that I did not pick for Book of the Month. But for $2, heck yeah, I'm going to read it. So this is about, I think, a city girl and like a country guy. And her family is all surgeons. And she's an ER doctor. And she doesn't want to be a surgeon. And they're like, you're just an ER doctor, which blows my mind. But um, And so she's deciding like what world she wants to live in, basically, I think. That, that might be a terrible synopsis, but that's what I got. And then last... This one is another one that I totally debated buying because just recently I was talking to somebody and said, I think I'm done with Jojo Moyes. I think I'm done with her. 
No, I'm not. So um, The Giver of Stars. This is a Depression era book about um, the Ellen, Eleanor Roosevelt's um, new traveling library. So this woman becomes one of the book book pack horse librarians of Kentucky. So they are delivering books to people who don't have access to them. And um, this sounds like such an interesting premise. And I feel like Jojo gets me every time with the interesting premises and then I don't love them. But I'm going to try this one. I know there was some comparison between this and another um, book with a very similar premise. And I've heard this one is better. So I'm going to try it. If I don't like this, I really will be done with Jojo Moyes. But we're going to try it. So $2. I mean, I can't can't pass it up. So that is my book haul. Um, if you can't tell from my voice, we are sick. I am sick again. Pregnancy problems. I just, um, Jeremy went to Richmond, Virginia for work the a couple weeks ago. Brought home bronchitis. And now he's just about over it. And I am getting it, I think. So, hi yi yi. Um, I also, soccer has ended. If you guys have been watching my videos uh, for the past couple months, I normally film during my daughter's soccer um, at on Saturdays. Jeremy takes them. And I film during that time. Soccer's over now until the fall, so um, I'm filming on a Sunday in my crazy bedroom, so thank you for forgiving the background, forgiving the kind of messiness. I'm probably only going to do one video a week for the next couple of weeks until I figure out a good filming time, but that is my May book haul. If you've read any of these books, let me know your thoughts. If there's any I need to really prioritize, let me know, and we'll talk to you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Well, friends, I'm back. I forgot to um, because my computer that I'm filming on was balanced on these last two books. So book of the month. I had to get a pick plus an add-on this month because apparently I just felt like book shopping this month. So I got Breathless um, by Amy McCulloch. Um, and this one is about a reporter who goes to interview this like famous climber. And she's down one of like the eighth highest peaks. Um, and... People start dying on this mountain and she's trying to figure out what's going on. Breathless, like I just kind of feel this tightness in my chest. Yeah, it could be the bronchitis, but this just sounds like maybe now is a good time to read this. I don't really know. And then um, last was Take My Hand. And this one is um, Montgomery, Alabama, 1973. Fresh out of nursing school, Sybil Townsend intends to make a difference, especially in her African-American community at the Montgomery Family Planning Clinic. She hopes to help women shape their destinies to make their own choices for their lives and bodies. However, her first clients are 11 and 13 years old. And she's just kind of thrown for a loop. And she um, falls in love with this family, I think. And then I don't know if there's dual timelines, but it says decades later with her daughter grown and a long career in her wake, Dr. Sybil Townsend is ready to retire to find her peace and um, and to leave the past behind. But there are people and stories that refuse to be forgotten that must not be forgotten because history repeats what we don't remember. So um, I'm really intrigued by this and really excited to read this. This is like historical fiction is not my favorite, but if I'm going to read it, something like this is right up my alley. So I'm really excited for this. So that is actually everything that I hauled for May. Let me know again if you've read any of these and thank you for watching. <music>